Oh, this is one of my favorite tracks in the game. It's too bad it only plays at horrible danger. <laughs> Yeah, that was her letting us off. And finally, a legend reborn. We drove the Empire back, but not without sustaining heavy casualties ourselves. We never thought the commander of the entire Imperial force would be there. Not just the commander. Maximilian had that woman with him. What was she? I can't believe she's human. In her hands, born cobalt lance and shield, therewith to strike down all man's arrows. What? One account of the Valkyrie describes them in those terms. You can't mean that she... She clearly has magic power, come on. But they existed thousands of years ago. If they'd survived, we'd know. You, you got another explanation for her glowing magic energy and using Valkyrie weapons? I'm not saying I'd buy all the legends either. I realize that it sounds a little crazy. But what we saw out there could only have been the Valkyria legend. I know. Chapter 8, The Woodland Snare. Personnel, glossary. If this level is what I think it is, or if this chapter is what I think it is, then it's one of my least favorite levels in the game and has my probably single favorite cutscene in the entire game. But first, let's go to headquarters. That chapter will come at a later time. So... Command room. New recruits. Nos. Bat back. But we got a scout. Is that it? No, Cesare. Oh, another sniper. And a sniper killer? Is he like an anti-sniper sniper? Boost and attack abilities. Okay. Another racist, though. But he would have been nice in the previous level. He's desert bred. But this is really for evasion, so I didn't have my snipers in real danger anyway. Come back in. But I did this just to pump my uh, personnel tab. War Cemetery. Hello. Nothing? Okay. Guess I'll level some more. I kind of want to just pump scouts forever. But it's getting so expensive. They're only level 10? I want to really crank them up, too. But I can only do it once. Look at that. that. That's it. I can't do it twice. I'll get my engineers and snipers kind of up to speed, but now it's getting to the point where I have to grind to level up once, and I don't like that. Oh, wait. Really? Class up. Upgrading your unit classes to elites adds a special bonus atop their normal growth. I forgot this was a thing. Some classes also become able to wield new types of advanced weaponry. Keep up the training and try to get all of Squad 7's units up to elite status. Congratulations, Scouts! As of today, you are elites! 
Wow, I completely forgot this was a thing. That means clearance for rifle grenades. Oh yeah. Scout Elite. Get out of here. The grind is worth it. Now we can spend some money at R&D, speaking of new types of weapons. Outfit tanks first. Oh no, that's always... Yeah, it's uh, it's developing weapons that it has the tank parts that I may or may not use. Frame assembly. Superior HP. Reinforce that armor. Turret armor. Spare tread 2. Yet yeah, now we have a problem. This is two bricks, so what am I going to do about it? I'll look into it once I build all my stuff. Drive system three. Reinforced uh, leaf. I'll say uh, and nothing. So, if I choose to actually... Oh. If I choose to actually outfit my tank, what am I going to change? So, spare belt plus 50 HP versus plus 125, so it's it's worth replacing. But the question is, what do I replace, right? And then we have Reinforced Leaf, Tread Defense plus 25 instead of plus 50, whereas these are plus 10, plus 15. I could just remove both of these, right? Because this is plus 10 and plus 15 for a total of 25, and this is just 25? Oh, so there's no real reason to have Leaf on then, because I could keep one of these on and maybe have room for the Idler, that kind of thing. I mean, these are horizontal as it turns out, but you see where we're going with this? In fact, I could do this. What if I put my Coil Spring in here? Now what do I remove? I could remove my... Yeah, plus 50 versus plus 125. I'll remove the... Plus 51, of course. Oh, oh, I see. Well, this is plus 75, so it's plus an additional 25. That's what it is. So the total is on the right. So straight up 75 versus the 50 that I had. Whereas this, I could simply move this, and now I can do the idler for a straight-up upgrade, at the slight cost of, uh, tread defense. If I need to change things, then I'll change them. Anyway, let's develop some machines, some weapons. Nothing with the rifles, huh? But I can pump machine guns, firepower boost 3, and that's as far as I go. Anti-tank lances, I can power them up too. Firepower boost. Sniper rifles, nope. Grenades? You really gotta work at upgrading the grenades. Uniforms and blast suits. We're out of luck. But I suppose scouts are now just equipped with rifle grenades, which is pretty cool. Come back. And now let's hit up... Yeah, Castle Front is it. Rising Star, probably Ica. Anyway, Militia Routes Imp Commander. Central Galleon Command reports that a recent chance encounter with Maximilian, Imperial Commander of the Galleon Invasion, near the ruins in Central Barrius, ended in the Empire's defeat and retreat from the Badlands. Speaking with one Galleon soldier who fought in the Desert Operation revealed a shocking eyewitness account of one female soldier among the Empire's army batting a tank shell out of the air by brute force. Army doctors looked into the possibility of combat stress-induced hallucination, but several other testimonies have arisen to corroborate this wild account. Not to mention Welkin and Alicia's own observation. Other reports suggest she resembled one of the Valkyra of legend, while the Galleon army has issued no official statement on the matter. New load in Galleon Southeast. Chief Valance of the Galleon Geological Survey reported recent discoveries of three new loads of Ragnite amid the southeastern mountains. Imperial capture of the key cities in Ragnite-rich Northern Gallia has meant a steady drain on domestic productivity. Paired with the rising demand for Ragnite for military uses, scarcity of the ore has become a critical problem. At the latest survey meeting, Chief Valance stated that the new discovery would likely go a long way toward filling the vacuum that has hounded the Gallian energy supply of late. Investigations into the size and quality of the newly found load are currently underway. 
Okay. So. No new reports. Come back. Let's get a load of our new updates then. Personal and weaponry. Or personnel. So, glossary. Oh boy, we got a bunch of new stuff. Barius Ruins Antechamber. The structures found across the Badlands in the Temple of the Crater's core are collectively called the Barius Ruins. The main temple, said to have been built by the ancient Valkyrer, was constructed using giant slabs of ragnite-rich stone in an architectural style found nowhere else in Gallia. Inside, the walls of the antechamber are inscribed with a history of the Darkson Calamity and War of the Valkyrer, written in Old Northern script. Decorated with a motif believed to be a representation of the Valkyrer people known as the Valkyrian Spiral, the Grand Hall also holds a door leading down into the Inner Sanctum, closed tight to bar the entry of all outsiders. The War of the Valkyrer the ancient Valkyrer united the European continent after subjugating the Darksons in this half-legendary war of conquest. By circa 30 BC, the Darksons are said to have ravaged much of Europa, wielding the Dark Arts to harness the destructive potential of Ragnite in their heedless power struggles. Even though the Valkyrer can clearly do that themselves? Suddenly, an immigrant population known as the Valkyrer emerged from the north, bearing a divine power, yeah, in the form of lances and shields bathed in blue light. Using those to halt the Darkson Rampage, they brought peace to Europa, according to inscriptions found in ruins across Europa. In addition to unifying the land under their rule, the Valkyrer are credited for the birth of modern European culture. Old Northern Script The written form of Old Northern, the, ling yeah, the lingua franca of Europa following its unification under Valkyrer rule. It uses a set of characters comprised of vertical, horizontal, and angled strokes no longer legible to most contemporary Europans. Inscriptions of the monuments discovered across the continent suggest that the script served both as a tool of everyday communication and in rituals. It has been shown that Valkyra royalty and members of the high clergy used a ceremonial variant of the script, though surviving examples are extremely rare. The ancient Darksons were also thought to have their own written language, but no material evidence remains today to support that theory. The Valkyra These immigrants from the north are said to have united the devastated continent under one rule in ancient times. Though believed to be an oceanic tribe that crossed into Europa via the North Sea, much of their historical origin remains unproven by archaeological fact. Their ragnite weaponry allegedly granted them unparalleled power over the Darkson natives, though other accounts suggest that their very bodies exuded a strange blue light that allowed them to perform superhuman feats. Where historical fact ends and legend begins, none can say. By the end of the second century after the conquest, interbreeding with a native population is thought to have all but ended the pure Valkyrian bloodline. Yeah, well... Darksons. Europa's oldest indigenous race, said to have lived across the continent since ancient times. They are characterized by dark blue-black hair and shawls bearing the traditional Darkson pattern. History tells of a Darkson calamity, in which this race devastated the continent until the Valkyrer defeated them in the War of the Valkyrer. For their crimes of senseless destruction, the Darksons were stripped of their last names and chased from their jobs and property, and remained the targets of hatred and persecution. Recent use of Darkson labor to mine and smelt ragnite in refinery sites full of pungent oils has given rise to a new set of stereotypes. Despite endless derision and persecution, the Darksons remain a proud race with a rich, unique culture. Oh boy, the Batamus. Maximilian, the leader of the Imperial Invasion, commanded this massive tank. It represents the enhanced version of an existing design, created the fell enemy castles or fortresses. Wow. Under orders from Maximilian, the body was reinforced and fitted with a Ragnite cannon, adding to its already formidable capabilities. It played heavily in the Empire's seizure of the Citadel at Gerlandio. Valkyrer Common Knowledge Legends of the War of the Valkyrer and a number of traditions that stem from this ancient people can be found in all areas of Europa, and a basic awareness of the Valkyrer's existence pervades the land as common knowledge. The generally held view of this race is as saviors of the continent, who led all of Europa to prosperity, with some going as far as to worship them as divinities. That said, the bloodline is believed to have died out long ago, resulting in a thinning of their presence within the popular consciousness. Today, there are many who view them less as historical fact than as the stuff of legend. Valkyria Worship Some Europans hold the Valkyria as the object of religious worship. Known to have possessed superhuman abilities, the Valkyrer are understood as either gods or the vassals of god in several sects, the largest of them known as Yggdism. The Yggdist faith arose at the start of the 3rd century and gradually spread to all regions of Europa. Its tenets hold that the Valkyrer were a race of gods, and its mythology draws heavily from the northern legends brought in during their conquest. Because beliefs had traditionally taken the form of popular superstitions tied closely to everyday practices, 
regional differences abound, blurring the lines between one sect and the next. And finally, the Lance and Shield. Unearthed from excavation sites across the continent, these weapons are thought to have been wielded by the Valkyrer. The shields are round, while the lances take the shape of a spiral shell, made from Ragnite more pure than even current refining technology can produce. While some variation exists among the weapon's shapes, all of them bear a design known as the Valkyrian Spiral as a core motif. Because contact with the Valkyria triggers a physical alteration to the weapon's shape, they are believed to serve as amplifiers for the race's preternatural abilities. That's the glossary, now for weaponry. The Ransgrazer M. A launching device developed as a way to propel hand grenades greater distances. Oh, this is because I level up my scouts. Early designs that had grenades loaded directly into the gun's muzzle prevented conventional firing, and the recoil from the grenades often bent the barrel. The solution came in the form of this underbarrel type, which allowed users to fire the rifle and grenade independently. Built to be the crowning glory of the galleon type rifles it affixed to, these grenades were named after Gallia's capital. Yeah, the Rangrees. Then we have personnel, and that'll be it. Oops, that's skirmishes, which I still haven't I haven't done that one. Isara, we got some more. The consistent prejudice she faced since childhood due to her darksome blood has fostered not bitterness, but respect for the brother who always stood up for her. Yeah, you can level up, well, level up, you can unlock more and more descriptors for various characters, but the main characters are plot activated. Also, I realized something from looking at a guide. Because permadeath exists, if I keep getting my characters killed, eventually the game will start randomly generating characters. Anyway, Largo. Reprimanded for the unlicensed planting of vegetables on army property, though the fruits of his labor earned accolades from foodies across the base, didn't we... Oh, the second paragraph, because the third one we did for the, the mission. Believing that frontline experience is everything, he has consistently rejected all offers of promotion and continued his career as a foot soldier, and Rosie. Despite her education, and with it her military training, ending at middle school level, experience with her town watch earned her the rank of corporal. Nuss, the new guy. Like Alicia, he worked as a team captain in the Brule town watch. His hobbies include writing and performing songs. Cesare. Oh, Catherine leveled up, okay. Always looking out for number one, he elected to become a sniper in order to keep himself safely removed from the front lines. Catherine. Ever since an ammo shortage left her to helplessly watch an ally get killed, she has felt extremely anxious without a loaded weapon close at hand. Maximilian. Said to grant opportunities to talented subordinates regardless of social rank, he is also known to ruthlessly dispose of anyone useless to his purposes. Interesting, so of all people who is not necessarily a classist, it's him although his northern commander does appear to be. No comment on Salvaria, but the southern guy does not seem to be so, because I think he's from a lower upbringing. Salvaria. Undefeated since she began work as one of Maximilian's commanders, her forays into the nations around the Empire have struck with the force of a tidal wave. Yeah, I don't doubt that. And that's the personnel. There we are, so for now it is time to stop the installments. Well, we certainly made a lot of progress today, didn't we? We actually met Maximilian and Silvaria, probably the scariest characters in the entire game, and we managed to defeat Maximilian's giant Batamus, the seemingly unbeatable tank. We got him to retreat. The bad news is there was no way we were chasing him down with Silvaria in his defense. I don't know what we're supposed to do about her, because she is seemingly unstoppable. But the good news is that we've done some upgrading of our own, our scouts are now elites, maybe we have a chance after all. Until next time, everyone.